Hi, this is Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute, presenting case 42 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case of retrograde CTO intervention of the right coronary artery that was complicated with a distal vessel perforation and was treated with a covered stand. The patient had an occlusion of the proximal right coronary artery with a clear proximal cap, although there were some small branches originating at the proximal cap, a very long occlusion length close to 90 to 100 millimeters, a bifurcation of the distal cap, and collaterals coming mainly from the circumflex epicardial and also some septal collaterals as well. This is the area of view demonstrating good sized distal vessel and mainly this large tortuous epicardial collateral coming from the distal circumflex. We therefore have a RCA CTO with a clear proximal cap, a long occlusion length, a bifurcation at the distal cap at the PDA and PLV, and mainly epicardial but also some septal collaterals. And the initial plan was to perform undergrade wire escalation, retrograde via septals if undergrade failed, followed by undergrade dissection reentry. The reason we wanted to avoid undergrade dissection reentry was because of the bifurcation on the distal cap. So we did several attempts of crossing undergrade. We have a Corsair microcatheter and use several guide wires, including Pilot 200 and Confianza Pro 12. However, despite using those wires, we can only go so far close to the distal cap. The lesion was extremely calcified, and although we traversed the large part of the occlusion, the very distal part was extremely calcified and hard to penetrate. That is why we attempted retrograde crossing. Since the collaterals were mainly epicardial, we first performed an injection into the septal, showing a connection with the PDA, and we were then able to advance a Sion guide wire into the distal um, posterior descending artery. We were then able to advance our Corsair, perform a retrograde knuckle, and um, prepare for reverse scar that was achieved in the mid part of the right coronary artery. During those attempts, the undergrade wire appeared to go into a small branch, which we didn't really pay much attention at the time, but that will become relevant when we discuss later on. We were then able to perform the reverse card and advance the retrograde guide wire into um, the undergrade guide catheter and externalize it. After doing that, we placed several stents all the way from the proximal right coronary all the way to the posterior descending artery. However, after doing this, we now saw that we had a perforation in one of the small branches of the posterior descending artery, which was likely the result of that undergrade guide wire that had entered into a side branch. When a perforation like this happens, the very first step is to perform the balloon inflation and stop the bleeding into the pericardium, which we did. However, the perforation continues. Now, this was a patient with previous coronary bypass graft surgery, which creates an additional risk for pericardial tamponade if perforation occurs because localized effusions can form that can compress various cardiac structures. That is why we want to treat these perforations very promptly, and what we did is deployed a jaw stand, cover stand, into that um, origin of the collateral vessel. Now, sometimes one can go into this perforated branch and put in a coil or fat. However, this was very small and hard to wire, and that is the alternative solution in those cases, is to advance a cover stand and cover the origin of the perforated branch, in that way minimizing bleeding into the pericardium. The patient did had a nice final result with T3 flow into the PDA and uh, have only minimal effusion on echocardiogram and did not require the performance of pericardiocentesis. There are several lessons from this case. The first one is that perforation should be taken very seriously in previous bypass patients because in those patients, localized effusions can form that can be lethal. Therefore, treating them as soon as possible is very important, and this can be done by first inflating a balloon and minimizing the bleeding in the pericardium.
And then for small vessel perforation, like in this case, the most typical way is to embolize them with either fat or a coil. But in cases where we cannot wire into that small vessel, because it's small or has a tight angulation, an alternative treatment is to deploy a cover stand, essentially covering the ostium of the perforated vessel and stopping flow into the perforation site. Thank you.